Caterpillar's been in the milling business for virtually since it started in the late 70s and 80s. But we really took a lot of time to, to refocus, reinvent what we're doing. Our, we really wanted to take a place where we weren't in a strong position in the marketplace, but we wanted to, A, change that obviously, but also complement where we're at with the pavers and the rollers throughout the industry. So we did take a lot of big focus, and, and starting up here, simply because we're here, is the conveyor. As we talked about, this is almost completely redesigned from scratch. There's elements that are pretty commonplace within the industry as far as folding, hydraulic folding setups for easier transport, all that. But a lot of what we did, we actually made it wider. So we gained about two, two and a half inches of width to the belt. We redesigned the belt to have deeper grousers, better troughing, carry more material. All the horsepower in the world won't mean much if you can't get that material out of the chamber and into the back of the truck. It will choke up your production, it'll slow the machine and slow the truck production as well. So making sure that was a key priority was, was a big function in there. The other big thing was serviceability. This is a high wear and tear area. It's carrying a lot of material. You get the, the belt itself will just wear as any do, but then you also got the roller setups that will get caked and roll through there. So having things like drop-down panels to be able to open up and get access to clean that out on a regular basis, and even just low technology things like magnetic skirting. It seems like a simple thing when you're talking about machines that are talking to each other on a job site, but simple magnetic skirting gives the guys an easy option to look in there. Previously they had to unbolt plates or try and work a, a spray gun through grates and stuff to try and clean those out. Now they've got easy access to check the rollers, work on them before they get caked up and stretch the belt out and, and create value. Uh, also looking at the undercarriage, we do use D3 undercarriage on here, similar to the Caterpillar uh, tractor setups. But what is different about this system is again mentioning to that, that steering alignment. So as you can see it right now, the, the tracks are in an opposing view, they're coordinated. It gives you the tight turning radius. As such, you get a little bit of a, of a pigeon toe, a toe out function of, between the true tracks, you can see that. And that gives you a better alignment for that radius. You want that inside track to have a tighter radius than the outside track, it gives you better steering. But then I'm going to rotate through and I go to a crab mode, which is both tracks put in the same direction. You want those truly par parallel, otherwise you're going to be fighting that through the steer. What we've done is we've added that cylinder there, and it's a smart cylinder. It knows the position of the tracks and the position of the machine, so as you go through the steering modes, it realigns those tracks to give you the right alignment. Saves wear and tear on the tracks, easier to operate, makes it a more maneuverable machine to work through. Also gives you the added benefit of over time, as, as alignment changes, as wear and the, and the pads kind of shape a bit of an alignment, you can actually adjust the alignment of the steering through the display using that setup as opposed to having to go do measure offs and, and hand wrench the, the spread between the tracks. We're using that smart technology in a lot of places, such like in the side plate cylinders. So we talked about here switching up to two hydraulic cylinders. It used to be a single cylinder in the middle on a, on a pull, on a steel cable pull. We've had other situations where we've had two cylinders, but they would be in a series mode. So if the front lifted up, but the back was was jammed, it would just sit there at half up, half down. Now we've got two independents that are that are powered to pull through that, so they don't get hung up. But with these smart cylinders, we know exactly where those are at. So now I've got two references, the front and the back, that now I know exactly where that plate is at in relation to the drum. So I can use that to integrate into the grade and slope system. I can use that drum as a, as a reference and I can and, and instead of having to add extra sensors to the machine, the machine itself can tell it where it is to go through the integrated grade and slope. We spent a lot of time redesigning the chamber on a whole. We've got it tighter into the drum, which means you're carrying less material at a time, less wear and tear. When you pick up at the end of a cut, you know, normally you'd have a big pile. It's still a little bit of a pile, but it's a smaller pile, easier to clean out, easier to move on to the next lane of cut and go on from there. With that, you know, we're talking a lot about serviceability. We keep on going back to that because these machines, typically in the past, you'd have these big frames. It's a long machine, it's a heavy machine, you needed big frames to kind of keep it stable, be able to keep that across the cut. But as such, you generally, if you had an engine problem, you had to pull the thing out from the top with a crane because you couldn't get to it. We've redesigned the frame setup, different strengthening methods to give you good access. As you can see, I'm not a very tall man, but I can reach the filters and fluids 
easy. There's a drop down panel so I can come up from underneath if I need to, as well as the walk in area from the, uh, from the top there to try and get access from the operator's platform. We move around a bit, you can see a bit of the display. These displays are common from the top to the bottom, as we mentioned. Gives you full access between grade and slope, what you're looking at right here, to machine information. You can give serviceability, diagnostics, calibrations, configurations. Talking about tier four regions. And this is also the display and similar setup to what we have on our asphalt pavers. This is a, a big thing in the industry for us, particularly in North America, where you get a, a good part of the industry crosses over with the paving crews. So for that familiarization, for a guy to be able to hop on and be able to understand the screen, because it looks familiar to him, he knows the screens to get information, is a big plus for Caterpillar, having that full range of equipment across the line to give them that comfort early on. Beyond that, you got the backlit controls here, easy to see in night operations. We even do simple things with customer feedback like the horns. The horn here alerts JD that I'm trying to get his attention. Now his horns up there have additional sirens that then alert the whole job site. So a simple low-tech thing like having two different horn arrangements is directly from customer feedback. Because the guy down here and the guy up top, they talk, they work back and forth. And if she's looking down and doesn't catch what he's saying or vice versa, they need to signal each other. But at the same token, they don't want to wake up the whole neighborhood if they don't have to. So simple customer feedback saying, give us tools to talk to each other, but not necessarily change the whole, alert the whole job site. Coming around the back, storage was something that we wanted to make, you know, make sure we have multiple places for. So we've got big back bumper arrangement, allow you to store um, displays if you do want to have sonic sensors. We've got areas for tools. Underneath there's trays to be able to put bit boxes. We've also got things like the cameras. This is set up standard in North America with front and rear cameras. You can see what you're dumping into the back of the truck as well as what's behind you. We also have options for magnetic mounted cameras. So you can put these anywhere on the machine. If you, you know, some guys like them down on the edge of the cut so they can see right on the line. Some guys look for them a bit you know, up to the front so they can see into the mirror or see in the side profile of the truck they're trying to align to. At that point in time, we're basically saying whatever you want to align, it's your job so that you control it, but we gave you the option with those cameras. Um, looking about overall things, electrical panel. Here we've positioned all the ECMs in the machines outside of the one that's built onto the engine is packed into this panel. Simple, you know, A, for us, it gives us one central location to kind of work our nervous system from. Two, if you do have an option, again, you're working in the middle of the night, you don't want to be crawling for different uh, relay points, different fuse panels. We've got LED indicators to let us know which relays are firing or if they're not firing. We've got extra fuses here. So that, you know, spare fuses in case one's blown, you've got them already on hand. You're not looking for the plastic bag in your glove box. Even a fuse tester. So if you think it's time, the screen will actually tell you what fuse is blown. But if you pull that out and you're still not sure, instead of sitting there trying to fly, you know, put a flashlight, a simple thing like a fuse tester built on board.